What's going on everybody? BD Anthony here. I hope you guys had a good Easter. In this video, I'm going to tell you the movies I've watched and I'm going to give you my reviews on these movies. And the first one I watched was A Walk in the Sun, which stars Dana Andrews, Richard Conti, and Norman Lloyd. And also co-stars George Tyne, John Ireland, Lloyd Bridges, and Sterling Holloway. It was a kind of long movie, but I did enjoy this movie. And I love war movies, and I knew I was going to like this movie. And the two, three people I'm familiar with are Richard Conti, Lori Britt. Actually, four people I'm familiar with are Richard Conti, um, Norman Lloyd, Sterling Holloway, and Lloyd Bridges. If you guys like war movies, I would check this out. And when I think of Norman Lloyd, I always think of him as the Nazi agent in Saboteur, an Alfred Hitchcock movie. And he worked with Alfred Hitchcock as a producer on Alfred Hitchcock Presents in several episodes and also on Alfred Hitchcock Hour as well. He also did another movie for Alfred Hitchcock and it was called Spellbound with Ingrid Bergman and Gregory Peck. And almost a year ago today, almost a year from today, we lost him. 106 years old when he died. Man, what a blessing. At that age to die. What a blessing. Lived a good life. He was good in this as well. And Richard Conti, when I think of him, I always think of him as Barzini in The Godfather. Because that's what I watched him the most. That would explain why I think of him, him in that movie the most. He was great in this as well. And this is a film take place in World War II in Italy. My ancestral home as well. Great movie. And the next one I watched was Charlton, with, is called Counterpoint, which stars Charlton Heston and Maximilian Schell. A different movie, I gotta say, because Charlton Heston played a famed orchestra who was held captive by Nazi generals and they are forced to play for them as well. And Maximilian Sell was excellent in this movie and it was no surprise he was gonna play a Nazi. He was known to play those kind of roles even though he he was an anti-Nazi. He he was somewhat typecast as a Nazi. Guys like Charlton Heston, which I do, I would recommend this. And the next one I watched was The Deadly Affair, directed by Sidney Lumet, which stars James Mason, Maximilian Schell, Harriet Sander, Anders, Harry Andrews, and Simone Signoret, or Signoret, if I'm pronouncing this correctly. And when I, I honestly knew I was gonna like this movie because I've seen a bunch of Sidney Lumet films like The Verdict, The Wiz, Palm Broker, Serpico, just to name a few. But what movie I think of Sidney Lumet the most is Dark Day Afternoon with Al Pacino. And I love James Mason in this as well. And Maximilian Sell did not play a Nazi in this movie, but he did play a bad guy in this. I would recommend you guys watch this. And the next one I watched was The Stone Killer, directed by Michael Winner, who directed the original Death Wish with Charles Bronson. Also with Charles Bronson in this movie as well. Honestly, I've seen so many Charles Bronson movies and I knew I was gonna like this. And this movie has the same vibe as Dirty Harry. If you guys see this movie, you would definitely know what I'm talking about. 
My dad loves Charles Bronson, and so do I. And if you guys love action movies, watch Charles Bronson movies, especially this one. And the next one I watched was a horror flick called The Old Dark House, which stars Boris Karloff, Melvin Douglas, Charles Lawton, and Gloria Stewart. I've heard about this movie for years, and I finally watched it a couple weeks ago. And I didn't really see it as a comedy movie, even though they say it's a horror comedy, but I did not see it as a comedy. I saw it as more horror. And Boris Karloff played one messed up dude. He plays a mute butler in this movie who has an alcohol problem. And the makeup on him was so grotesque. Well done by Jack Pierce. If you guys don't know who Jack Pierce was, he was Tom Savini and Rick Baker of the 1930s and 40s who did the makeup for Frankenstein, The Mummy, and The Wolfman, the original Universal Horror monsters. And Gloria Stewart was stunning in this movie. I gotta get into, I highly recommend you guys watch this, but I gotta get into Gloria Stewart. See, here's an actress from the 1930s and 40s, and took a, she took a break in 1945, then came back 30 years later. And 1997, that was a huge year for her because she played a role that she finally gets recognition and nominated several awards and won awards and she was nominated for Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. And that role was the old roles from 1997 Titanic with Le Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. She finally deserved the recognition she's got. I, I think she got recognition, but I bet they didn't really appreciate her for her acting, more of her beauty. But 1997, she definitely got recognition for her acting. And two or three years after that, she was honored with a Hollywood Walk of Fame, which I did see when I was in California two years ago. I also saw the Star Walk of Fame of Boris Karloff, Charles Lawton, and Charles Bronson as well. And the next one I watched was Criss Cross with Burt Lancaster, Yvonne DiCarlo, and Dan DeRay. I love these New York films. They're fun mo movies to watch. I'm an old school movie person. I love all kinds of movies, especially oldies. This was a, f a fun movie. And deep down, I knew I was gonna like this. I love these kind of movies. Leonardo, I mean, what did I say? Yvonne DiCarlo, a lovely actress. She was st stunning and lovely in this movie. Also in the Ten Commandments, and McClintock. Guys like Neor films or want to get into Neor films, I would definitely recommend you guys watch it. And also, this was a film debut of Tony Curtis, who plays as a gigolo dancing with DiCarlo's character in the movie scene. And the next one I watched was another Neor film. Uh, it's called... This Gun for Hire, which stars Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake. I wasn't really so sure about this movie, but after I watched it, I fell in love with Alan Ladd and the lovely Veronica Lake. Fun movie. And I'm glad I watched it, and I'm glad I love this movie. Another good noir film. And the last one I watched was... Double Feature, Farewell My Lovely, and Big Sleep, which both stars Robert Mitchum playing both same characters in these movies. Farewell My Lovely, I saw the old 1946 or something. I think it was 1946 version of it. And the title was called Murder My Sweet, but it had the same concept in this movie as well. 
both great films. In The Big Sleep, James Stewart had a role in this as a rich general who is being blackmailed. And Farewell My Lovely also has great casting of Charlotte Rampling, Sylvia Miles, John Ireland, Harry Dean Stanton, Joe Spinell, and a year before he became rock, famous for Rocky, Sylvester Stallone was in this movie and had s some exposure in this movie. And uh, Moose Malloy, played by Jack O'Halloran. Jack O'Halloran was really good in this movie. And this was his first movie. And when I think of Jack O'Halloran, I always think of him as one of the back, one of Terrence Stamp's henchmen in Superman and Superman 2. And Joe Spinell helped Sylvester Stallone's career. And if it weren't for Joe Spinell, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be a Sylvester Stallone. If you guys like Robert Mitchum and New York films, I would definitely recommend these films. The Big Sleep is also directed by Michael Winner, who also directed in Death Wish, The Stone Killer, and other stuff as well. Definitely worth checking out. If you guys like me doing these movie reviews, smack the like button, subscribe to my channel, and comment below if you've seen these movies. I hope you guys have a good Mother's Day. Have a good day, everybody.